Anna's crushed bones reforge. Light fills her eyes. Her grip, still holding against the seizing Exo's bladed thrust, liquefies its plated hand to scrap. A glorious crown of solar flame erupts from her visor, and she cracks her forehead into the Exo's face. It reels. Tufts of flame extinguish in the vacuum. Anna kicks away. Solomite engulfs 18 kelvins. Anna hammers off two rounds of celestial annihilation. They melt straight through the Exo, puncture the station plating, and scream through space for light years. The Exo slumps, a molten heap. Welcome back, Guardians. This is technically part two of my video, Rasputin is an Exo. I would recommend watching that video first, as even though this video is on a different topic, it continues Anna Bray's story from the web lore called Legacy. Between the Rasputin Exo video, which will be the first link in the description, and this video, you will have had the majority of the Legacy web lore summarized. This video is essentially about Anna Bray discovering a colonization effort from Clovis Bray that involved a ship full of Exos. Stay tuned, it's pretty interesting and also pretty unknown at this stage. As usual, the artwork at the beginning of this video was provided by Gamma Trap. All Patreon donations go toward paying Gamma Trap for his artwork. A link to Patreon and Gamma Trap socials will be below. Also, if you want to join me live over on Twitch, follow my Twitch channel for notifications. As I don't always post on YouTube when I go live, I'll put a link to my Twitch channel below in the description as well. This is Marlon Games, and I hope you enjoy this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. So, if you remember the first video, I mentioned that we were not sure about the timeline. We thought that the Exos in the Clovis 9 facility were from the Golden Age, but couldn't be positive. The Legacy 2 web lore confirms that these Exos are from the Golden Age, and more specifically, pre-collapse, meaning that the Rogue Mind Initiative, the initiative to split Rasputin's mind, was also a pre-collapse plan. Have a listen to the entry, it reads. I was able to pull some data from those Exo samples. Jinju perches on the cockpit dashboard. Two tech mites crawl over her shell. I couldn't completely narrow it down, but they're definitely from the Golden Age, circa the Collapse. So just keep this in mind, because it means that Clovis Bray was doing all of these events that I'm about to talk about during a time of peace. As a quick reminder from the last video, Anna Bray discovers these Clovis sites, numbered 1 to 12 which are linked to pillory stations. The station's function was to split Rasputin's mind if he ever disobeyed orders. And this whole system remained hidden from Rasputin. Have a listen to the entry. Jinju continues, I've been going through the pillory mainframe download. Those stations are meant to split Rasputin's mind up in the event that he became, uh, insubordinate. That's disgusting. Echo appears to have been a contingency program that activates afterward. They also had a cornerstone schematic of his brain. Of course, there was also talk about putting a clone of Rasputin's mind into an exobody, which is what I spoke about in the last video. So, Anna Bray and her ghost Jinju discover all of this and head off to one of those stations, the stations meant to split Rasputin's mind. It's called Kalis Station and is near Uranus, or Uranus, if you want to say it that way. So, they're en route to Kalis Station, and whilst travelling, it seems that Anna Bray encounters the darkness. Yep, the actual darkness. She experiences the same thing the Awoken experienced when they were created. Anna's ship is pulled off course. Have a listen. Um, where's the planet? She slowly rolls her head around the cockpit. They drift through space on placid waves of nothing, toward a distant nowhere. The vast luminous twinkle of the Milky Way plays out in panorama. The gloom speckle pinholes prick gaps in the starry sea. The absence from them directly apparent to Anna's eye like rays of darkness from a black sun through sheer cosmic sheet. Jinju perks up, internal senses suddenly askew. Something nabbed us right out of our jump. We're off course by, Jinju calculates, 3 AU? What? 
and it manually scans the trajectory equations in the nav computer. There's nothing wrong with the math. Rasputin stings and pricks red iron, steady pressure, with localised insistence. Feels strange. Jinju is distant. We should go. Anna initiates recalibrations on the jump drive's positioning solution. There's definitely some weird space out there. Gravitational wave anomaly detected. Anna tries to escape multiple times, but fails, only to continue to experience these gravity waves. However, she is eventually successful and is able to escape and correct the ship's jump to find Kayla Station. Upon arrival, the station is surrounded by warsats, which, I am assuming, like the security systems they previously encountered in Clovis 9, the warsats detect Rasputin, aka the rogue mind, and so they begin firing upon them. Have a listen. Those are warsats. Jinju breaks the silence, eager to shift her mode of thought far from weird space and gravity waves. Finally, some luck. Anna says with relief. I bet we can daisy chain Rasputin into the station's network through the defense system. Oh, they're powering up. Maybe we... Horns of responsive distortion roll across the cabin like a stress wave. Rasputin's alert pings litter the canopy HUD. Brace. Anna pushes hard on the flight stick and reflexively dives under a barrage of laser fire. Nose thrusters raw vibration through her hands as she cuts to guide the ship vertical and tumbles into a barrel roll, slipping around follow-up bursts. A bolt skims shallow across her starboard side. Ricochet. Shockwave tremors reverberate through the hull. Red, ping all incoming fire vectors, Jinju arm the spikes. While Anna evades the Warsat assault, Rasputin hacks their system and quote, demands subservience. After Rasputin has controlled the Warsat, they enter the Kalis station. Within the station, Anna discovers a hull full of exos. Have a listen. Jinju beams light over the fuselage as they float through the raptured bay in weightlessness. The reflective hull is filled with exos. Mannequin cadavers hang frozen on silk threads, surrounded by globular blobs of various fluids. A loose wire tangle sags around the lifeless many. One or two glides freely within the cabin. The chest plates share a pristine logo. In order to try and fully understand this plan to split Rasputin's mind, Jinju hacks into the station manager bot, bringing the bot back to life. Have a listen. The ghost sweeps the frame and gets to work. This isn't just some mop bot. This is the station manager. Let's get it inside. The frame sparks to life, looks directly at Anna and speaks with grating age to its voice. Welcome, Anna Bray. Very excited to see a Bray walk this hall again. It has been a long time. So those crops in the rings are food supplies for a colony mission? Yes, thank you for asking that, Anna Bray. Yeah, and the colony ships are full of exos? Partially. Echo 1 and Echo 2 were stocked with exo unit crews. As you know, their task was to establish and oversee embryonic development of Colony M31, Site A and Site B. If Rasputin got out of hand, they weren't planning on resetting him. I don't have access to Clovis 1 to 12 directories. They just assumed he would win. The pillory is a last ditch panic room. I don't have access to Clovis 1 to 12 directories. Now, like I said at the beginning, remember these events are during the Golden Age. Clovis Bray had organized units of exos to oversee embryonic development, and the colony ships had rings of crops food supplies to support human life. It sounds like Clovis Bray was restarting civilization. Now, as his system is separate from Rasputin, it's hidden from him. It seems like Clovis Bray thought Rasputin may potentially destroy humanity and they needed to rebuild separate from him. Also remember, we are only getting bits and pieces of this story. But so far, Anna has discovered a network of Clovis Bray sites and planetary stations that are separated from Rasputin. The stations are meant to divide his mind in case he goes rogue, and she has also discovered many exos, 
who seemed to be the gatekeepers of this new civilization that that was meant to be birthed. Of course, all of this sounds pretty shady, and at the very least, very secretive, so Anna is keen to better understand her involvement in the program. She quizzes the station manager bot. Have a listen. It reads, Anna massages her palm. What was my role in all of this? As you know, your work on the Warmind made you a prime asset to oversee applicant selection. I chose the people in there? Anna watches the ringlet spin, her mind repeating the statement back to her. Artificial night slips back to artificial day as the station's rotation continues. As you know, yes. Additionally, your work on the Warmind, as you know, was vital to the establishment of Clovis 1 to 12. Do I know where the candidates came from? Did they volunteer? I do not have access to candidate profiles. Anna shuts her eyes and takes a steady breath. You said I helped with the pillory stations. Yes. How so? I don't have access to Clovis 1 to 12 directories. So, Anna is sort of instantly concerned with the candidates, which I think are referring to the exo caretakers themselves unless they're referring to the humans or the embryos or something else on board. And she's concerned if they volunteered, the implication being, were they forced to be involved in this project? Furthermore, the manager bot reveals that there has been more than 12 Clover sites. There are in fact 13, but little is known about the 13th Clover site. Have a listen. As you know, Miss Bray, there are 13 Clovis sites that this station is linked to. 13? What's the 13th? So, Anna, concerned of her involvement, continues to search the pillory station, trying to discover her past. And then suddenly, Anna is blasted through the chest, killing her. Her attack was a camouflaged exo that had been reactivated somehow. Whilst Anna Bray is being resurrected by her ghost, we get to witness the story from the Exos' point of view. The main thing that happens is that these Exos who are meant to be the candidates that Anna Bray selected for the program seem to be captive. They don't seem to be there by choice, which is what Anna Bray feared. When the Exo wakens from its sleep upon the station, it receives this message. Welcome to Echo 1. Before your departure, you should have been briefed by a station warden. If you don't recall your station warden, please alert your crew captain. Now then, my name is Anna Bray, and you're one of the lucky few who has been selected for the Echo Project. The future of humanity rests on your sh- The wardens, which seem to include Anna Bray, seem to have enslaved the Exos. Exos that are meant to rebuild humanity. And they seem to have two purposes, from what I can tell. One is to house fragments of Rasputin's mind, and also overlook this embryonic development. Whatever that means. Have a listen to how this exo describes the Wardens. He finds a prison's purpose, a bridge's end. If he holds this end, perhaps the Wardens hold the other. The many minds, the liars' words, takers, they would know of his escape. The Wardens would come to take with fresh shackles. He prepares. He learns from the Warden's alchemy. He digs through the carcass of his once mighty tomb. Upon seeing Anna Bray, have a listen to how the Exo describes Anna just before they fight each other. It reads, The Wardens reap what had been sown, as Wardens always do. She comes to collect him. So, after Anna is brought back to life by her ghost, she continues to fight the Exo, who refers to her as the Warden. Have a listen. Anna loses track of her attacker momentarily in the darkness before it pushes off from a hard surface, triggering her visor. She spits off rounds from 18 Kelvins. Some find their mark, puncturing the camouflage shroud and revealing her adversary for impotently fizzling on the Exo's outer shell. It covers the gap with surprising speed and catches her gun hand. Anna discharges an arc round. Tiny bolts reach across to the Exo's metal skull in vain as it scorches ceiling. The Exo flattens its other hand and stabs toward her stomach. Die, Warden. 
adrenal instinct floods Anna's body. She stops it. They lock. Anna's vision blurs. She gasps for breath. Muscles quiver in her arms, desperate for oxygen. A spark cinders in her. Jinju rushes to Anna's side. The ghost deconstructs itself. Orbital shell bits swirl around a core of coalescing light. She fills the room like a brilliant star, overcharging her wayward guardian. Anna's crushed bones reforge. Light fills her eyes. Her grip, still holding against the seizing Exo's bladed thrust, liquefies its plated hand to scrap. A glorious crown of solar flame erupts from her visor and she cracks her forehead into the Exo's face. It reels. Tufts of flame extinguish in the vacuum. Anna kicks away. Solomite engulfs 18 kelvins. Anna hammers off two rounds of celestial annihilation. They melt straight through the Exo, puncture the station plating and scream through space for light years. The Exo slumps, a molten heap. So it doesn't end there. In the Exo's dying breath, the Exo continues to taunt Anna as the Warden. Have a listen. It draws breath. Resilient. Anna drops to a knee. Barrel trained on the Exo's head. She takes a full breath. The Exo's eyes are unflinchingly locked to her. It refuses to die. It points to Anna's badge with its still blistering hand. Bray. Warden. She says the only thing she can think to say. Who were you? It hesitates. Echoes. Her head droops. How many did you live? She looks to find his number designation, but it is missing. It looks past her as Uranus light once again trickles through the station. Echoes grow. Wardens keep. What did I do to them? Look, I'll be completely honest, I don't know exactly what is happening here. It is exciting, and all we know is that there was this plan to rebuild civilization outside of Rasputin's site during the Golden Age using Exos. Exos who may contain a clone of Rasputin's mind as a backup, but also seem to perform some sort of caretaker mode or role. And in addition, the Exos seem to be forced into this role by Clover's brain. You now have all the information that I do, so what do you think? And with that, that concludes this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. If you cannot think of a comment and you would like to support the channel, you can leave the word Echoes to represent the Echo Exos above the hidden stations. As usual, it's been a pleasure. This is Marlin Games. Peace.